Morning, everyone. Вы действительно попали на презентацию третьей волны социсследования Chatham House. You are indeed watching the presentation of the poll Chatham House. Да, начинать писать. Few technical announcements. Переводи. Даша, you can start writing. You can start recording. I mean, Yuri is interpreting. Yes, he's right. Все отлично. Окей, тогда давайте начинать. Right there. Okay. Let's get the show on the road then. Пол by Chatham House, what the Belarusians think. Рыгор Остапени will be doing the talking, he's associate director of Chatham House and research director of the Center for New Ideas. I will remind you. Поэтому, если вам удобнее слушать нас по английски. Да, Otherwise, спасибо большое, Антон. Тем, yes. yes, thank you, Anton. Good morning, everyone. I'm about to share my screen. Да, вот моя презентация. Get Тут. Slides up. Yeah, here it comes. Насколько я понимаю, вы so все ее видите. Uh, uh, да, я, наверное, начну с того, что я представлю. Что... So let me first introduce myself. My name is Rigor Astapenia. If there are any media from other countries. Uh, Uh, from Russian-speaking countries, uh, it's Grigory in uh, Russian. Uh, Rigor is the Belarusian version. I am indeed a, an associate researcher at Chandam House. I, I act in this capacity today. I'm also a research director at the Center for New Ideas. It's, it's, an, it's a Belarusian NGO. I have a PhD in political science and politology, so uh, people call me a sociologist, uh, and sociologists are upset about me. And, but, uh, I, I just like to say up, uh, right off the bat that I'm, I'm a political scientist. Okay, let me tell you about the Belarusians' views on the current political crisis in Belarus. Let me start from some basic stuff in the methodology. Uh, we've surveyed the uh, total number of 926 respondents between 14th and 20th January 2021. Our sample is uh, representative of urban population of Belarus in terms of gender, age, and the size of respondents' town of residence. Uh, well, rural citizens are some, some, something else. Uh, we're, we're talking about urban population that account for around 80% uh, of the population. Uh, it was computer assisted web interview Kavi method uh, that uh, is widely used in political research. So this is the one we've used here. Urban dwellers in Belarus are using internet extensively, so this is not a limitation to use Kavi. Right, in principle it's possible that there is a certain percent, percentage of people who are not uh, falling into our research because they're less economically active and normally they are uh, proponents of the bill of uh, Alexander Lukashenko. So we allow some tolerance that uh, Lukashenko's sympathies or sympathies towards Lukashenko are slightly higher uh, than those covered in our poll. About the sample, one more thing. Uh, people write in Telegram channels about this, media mentions this. Uh, how Uh, the statistical margin of error for the sample of 926 people with a 95% confidence interval, it, uh, that statistical margin does not exceed 3.2%. Actually, the structure of the provinces or oblasts, uh, regions as they're called in Belarus, uh, well, it's quite ho uh, homogeneous. Uh, Moldova is 50% uh, fewer population than Belarus, uh, but it's very difficult to run a poll uh, in Moldova because, albeit it's, it's a smaller country, but uh, uh, it's, it's very heterogeneous in terms of uh, population composition in various regions. Belarus is, is not, Belarus is homogeneous. So I believe that you will get the slides afterwards. Uh, Anton will, will forward it on to you. He will also send you the SAV file, the, the SAV file, which uh, contains all the answers by all the respondents uh, who are doing the poll. But, well, obviously this takes a special software, SPSS, to open that SAV file. Anyway, so if there are any questions about the methodologies, please feel free to shoot. I'll be happy to discuss them. Right, let's move on. So this is the third wave of the polls. Uh, 
We are asking quite trivial questions about uh, the elections, whether you went to the elections. This is the question number one, did you vote? Uh, and indeed, the turnout was very high. Quite a lot of people attended. Uh, actually we went to vote. You see that more than uh, three fourths of people actually went to vote. We keep asking people the same question, how did you vote? And in the first, second, third wave, we get roughly the same responses. Uh, Svetlana Tikhanovska uh, leads with uh, slightly over 50%. Lukashenko rakes in 21%. But there's a, quite a bit of people who refuse to answer. So which uh, basically contributes to a certain extent of uncertainty. People who choose not to enter is 11.2%. Uh, so 11.2%, uh, it's quite quite a lot to give some uncertainty to the outcomes of the, this poll. The next question we ask is uh, the people's standpoint on the protests themselves. So, there, there, there is a certain proportion of people, 19 to 20% of people, uh, who often find it hard to give an answer. And largely, uh, it's a game changer when we see that mm, neither side gets the majority, uh, negative or positive. The majority voted for Tikhanovska, the majority opposes the violence. But when they're asked a direct uh, question, whether they oppose the current government, uh, or how they feel about the protests against the current government. Many people decide not to answer, choose not to answer, mostly, or probably because of fear, probably because uh, of some other reasons, for some other reasons. But anyway, we often ask people uh, how they feel about things that have been happening uh, over the past months uh, in Belarus. And we segment the Belarusian society based on that. Let's run along uh, the main things. Uh, and uh, the outcomes of the elections have been falsified. Uh, we know that uh, when the word protests uh, are used and there is a peaceful protest uh, that, that is mentioned alongside uh, the popularity, of the, the, these protests are becoming much more popular. And when they get these uh, peaceful with the protests, people tend to support it more than otherwise. Uh, although the, 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 there's another question, uh, the elections have not been completely transparent, uh, but uh, people are still happy with the result. Uh, that's mostly the proponents of Lukashenko. They do not believe that the election procedure is uh, important uh, as to who heads up the state anyway. So they, they believe that even though Lukashenko did lose the elections, she should still be head of state. Uh, next question about the uh, disproportionate use of force uh, when uh, dispersing the protests uh, uh, the 9th to 11th of August. Most Belarusians think uh, that this is the case. We also believe that this idea of uh, cessation of violence against peaceful protesters is very popular among people. Uh, around 70% of Belarusians, urban dwellers of Belarus, uh, they uh, so they, they want this, this to stop. 60% uh, say that uh, what's been happening at the, the pre-trial detention center on the Krestina, it was, uh, it was quite, uh, it was torture. Uh, there are also things like 20, 26%, 25% agree that uh, excessive force has been used against the peaceful protesters. And mainly the people saying that are the proponents of Lukashenko. Running on, I'll, I'll maybe skipping some of the points. I don't want our slides to take uh, 90 minutes. But uh, the main the main points I will still emphasize. Right. Uh, so part of be uh, part of people feel guilty or feel feel that they are to blame for for uh, things happening in Belarus. They agree uh, with the statement that I feel I have not done enough to overthrow uh, the regime of Lukashenko. 41% uh, of people say that uh, they agree completely that, that, that they have not done enough to overthrow this regime. Uh, also, most people, 70 plus percent of people say that the government should negotiate with those who don't agree with the election outcomes. What have we picked up on during this poll also as well? 
more, more people uh, started saying that the protest activities are starting to wind down. It's 50 plus percent, 51 percent at this time. Many people uh, condemn the refusal of the government to participate in negotiations. They say that it could lead to ramp ramping up in violence from both sides. Uh, they can, they, uh, people say that we risk ending up in a civil war. Uh, and uh, the, the violence by the law enforcement might trigger the same from the protesters. Uh, you may have seen from other materials that we segment Belarus, the Belarusian society. Uh, we used to segment it into three groups, uh, the core of the protests, uh, the, the bystanders, uh, and the pro uh, proponents of Lukashenko. Now we've since uh, split them into five groups. We've split the society into five strata because we've seen significant differences in how people respond. The first group is the core of the protest, 37 percent, people who support uh, people who support protests, uh, who voted for Tikhanovska, who is, uh, talk about excessive use of force, uh, torture on the Krestinov detention center, and unjustified uh, ruthlessness of the actions of the law enforcement. Uh, the sympathetic people, 20 percent, uh, they are 50-50, they are neutral or support the protest. Uh, they had various uh, ways uh, to, to vote. They, they voted differently. Somebody voted uh, for Tikhanovska, somebody voted for Dmitriev, uh, but uh, against all was the mo or refused to answer. It was the most frequent uh, response. And they also say about excessive force by law enforcement and torture in the Crescent Detention Center. Uh, so that's that's the sympathizers. Uh, the more challenging groups uh, is the, the skeptics uh, and uh, well, people who don't care. Skeptics uh, are talking about uh, the well, the neutral. They're against Lukashenko, but they're not uh, not for the, the protest. They're in the middle somewhere. So provisionally speaking, if we were to try to reconstruct the the, the way to uh, receive the information is mostly the, the Russian propagandist Vladimir Solovyov. Uh, he mostly uh, speaks against Lukashenko. Uh, he was uh, frequently talking about tortures. He was frequently uh, bringing up the unjustified nature of the law enforcement actions. Uh, so uh, the the, the uh, attitude to protests is quite skeptical. Okay. So these people also refuse to answer who they voted for. Uh, uh, the, the people uh, who don't really. Oh, well, skeptics uh, say that uh, about excessive force, uh, they are often find a hard time answering about the tortures, and they say that the law enforcement sections were not justified. Uh, the people who don't care, 16 percent, uh, neutral as uh, standing to the protests. Uh, they didn't vote. Uh, they voted against everyone, or didn't uh, vote, uh, or refused to answer. Uh, they skipped the uncomfortable questions in our polls. It's people who don't care. And there is a uh, Lukashenko stronghold. 18% of the Belarusian society they voted for Lukashenko. They believe that the law enforcement actions uh, was justified. No excessive force was used. No tortures were used. Uh, well, some of them still find a hard time answering. So that's that's it for the segmentation. Let's move on to the next questions. Now, this one is about uh, the electoral ratings of the people uh, who are currently politicians in Belarus. The first question that we ask people, uh, we invite people to uh, pick three options, not just one. Uh, which of the people on the list would make a good president of Belarus so that we could see who has Who's, who's number two or number three, uh, say, the, not, well, the, these are the candidates uh, for the presidential post. Who are the number two and three, apart from the best president in people's minds? So we see two major politicians on the political scene. It's Viktor Babarik and Alexander Lukashenko. If we were to add, say, uh, Maria Karesnikov's rating to Viktor Babarika, his rating is uh, even higher. Well, anyway, we can add someone, uh, somebody's uh, percentage points, uh, like Vladimir Makei to Lukashenko, and his rating will uh, become improved. But anyway, there are two leading, two major politicians. Uh, 
this is the second iteration of this question. Which of these people do you think would make the best um, president of Belarus? Only one option possible. In this case, these 19.3% uh, are no longer an option, neither, or not, not one of the above. Uh, so that's a quite an interesting story when a list of 20 people, people choose not to uh, elect anyone. That also shows the attitude of uh, the Belarusian society. They don't really know who to vote for. Number three after uh, Viktor Babarik and Alexander Lukashenko is Pavel Latushka with 12%. Uh, the rest are considerably have scored considerably fewer votes by from potential elector from the potential elector. And then there's a whole bunch of questions uh, that we asked the people. We offered them uh, certain statements, and there were five ways to answer. Disagree completely, most agree, not sure, most agree, agree completely, left to right. I believe that I will highlight uh, the most interesting uh, statements the way I see. Uh, the first statement, there are too many civil servants and government entities in Belarus. This is the opinion that we see, uh, well, almost 80% of Belarusians mostly agree or agree completely, the, the orange and the green bars. Uh, well, it's very interesting that Belarusians are so skeptical about the government entities and civil servants. Uh, second most interesting point uh, on this slide here. Again, the way I see it, uh, the bulk of the money in Belarus goes to the capital city. Uh, not much remains for the oblast centers, for the, for the regional centers let alone district centers. So people say about a certain dissection, there is a uh, there is a split, there is a divide between the regions in terms of funding. And the third interesting point uh, in this slide, uh, loss-making government enterprises should be shut down if it leads to growth of unemployment uh, for three to six months to, afterwards. Uh, this statement, uh, well, only 33% disagree with that. Only 33% uh, of those 926 people would ask, uh, they disagree with that. The Russian society is quite liberal in economic uh, view terms. If we tell them, so we're going to shut down some enterprises and there will be some un unemployment, the Belarusians say, okay. Okay, probably if, if they generate a loss, uh, what, what other options are there? Shut them down. The next slide. So what's interesting on, on this one here? So the statement that uh, Lukashenko uh, is able, uh, uh, Lukashenko is incapable of reforming Belarus political city uh, system in a way that it reflects the wishes of most Belarusians. Uh, well, most people say that uh, Lukashenko is unable to do that. So 6.8 plus 8.6. Quite few people believe that Lukashenko can reform the Belarus uh, political system so that uh, most Belarusians' wishes are respected. Uh, the president should not uh, hold the office for longer than two, uh, two terms in a row. Most Belarusians, well, 75% of Belarusians believe that this should be the case. Uh, next question. Rank and file citizens of Belarus have no protection against arbitrary treatment from the law enforcement. Well, most people say that uh, ordinary common citizens are not are, un, are unprotected. Uh, three fourths uh, of uh, the people, again, 75%, say that uh, the people are not protected. Right. Uh, lack of investigation 70% of people say that the government bodies are not properly investigating the acts of violence perpetrated by the law enforcement against the, against the uh, protesters. Right. Uh, so about this slide here, uh, what's what's the most interesting of these statements? How successfully has Belarus been dealing with the uh, coronavirus pandemic? Uh, so we only one fourth, uh, twenty five percent of the Belarusian society believe that Belarus is handling the coronavirus pandemic well. Uh, only four percent agree completely with that. Another interesting question about many talented people having to leave the country uh, after the elections. Uh, yes, 70% of people say that this is happening. So largely we see that uh, people feel that happening. Uh, so they, they see that the country is losing a lot of talent through that. 
you know, this slide here, an interesting question about the uh, white, red, white flag. It's a fascist flag. It should be banned. Uh, this this one is in the middle. Question number number four. So these points, the white, red, white flag is a fascist symbol that ought to be banned. 24% uh, of people mostly agree or agree completely. They say that it, it's a fascist symbol and it, sh it should be banned. And in principle, uh, this, this endeavor of the country's propaganda machine, the government propaganda, it does trigger some effect, but not uh, the majority, not for the majority. Most people do not share this point. This is the opinion of the group that supports uh, the Lukashenko, the so-called Lukashenko stronghold in our polls. Next up is the question about well, there's an interesting question here about the leaders and the protest leaders and the government should be striving to uh, seek uh, for mutually beneficial solutions. The, most people believe that, uh, respondents believe that uh, the dialogue is necessary, it must be happening. Uh, next question, in your opinion, when will Lukashenko seize uh, his uh, career as president of Belarus? Largely, people who believe that this is going to happen this year account for about 36%, 36%, give or take. They believe that Lukashenko will cease being the president this year. So that, that's a certain slump compared to previous. Uh, polls, uh, well, more Belarusians were sure that Lukashenko will leave uh, early, earlier rather than later. The fears of Belarusians, uh, the changes in the political system will affect uh, the development of the situation in Belarus. So we ask this question, what are you personally afraid of? So the biggest fears of people uh, the decrease in salaries and pensions and the growth of unemployment, the two leading uh, so economic economic things. We do not see that people are, are afraid of shortages of foodstuffs. We do not believe, uh, well, people do not believe that uh, there will be a crime on the rise. Even the fears of breaking off ties with Russia, well, it's, it's not exactly paralyzing. It's not the dominant one. Moving on, we also ask some questions about Russia. We asked how Belarusians felt about the Russian president, uh, Vladimir Putin. And Professor Vardamaski showed uh, quite similar data last week, uh, as, as far as we know. So our data is a match to his. Vladimir Putin is a popular uh, politician in Belarus. And most people are either very or positive or mostly positive about him, about his presidency. So, however, the attitude uh, towards Putin ha has worsened. This is the core of the protests. 40% uh, of people started feeling worse about Putin than they used to before, before the elections. People who actively support uh, the protests, uh, the core of the protests are now have negative standing to Vladimir Putin because they believe Putin supported Lukashenko's regime and thereby they violated this brotherhood nature of the relations between Belarus and Russia by supporting the unlawful regime. At some point, the headquarters of Svetlana Stikhanovska uh, voiced the idea that Belarus should not be paying back the debts to Russia that Lukashenko borrowed after August 2020. And we see that uh, this uh, core of the protests uh, supports this idea, 39%, uh, 39% in case of our poll. These people are the core of the protests. Uh, they feel that Belarus should not be paying back those loans that Lukashenko took out after August 2020. In your opinion, is the Russian government attempting to draw closer to the representatives of the protest movement, such as Tikhanovsky or the Coronation Council, we believe we see that the bulk of the, the the citizens do not believe that this is the case. Also, we ask the question whether Svetlana Tikhanovska and the Coordination Council are attempting to draw closer to Russia. We've seen that 
although most people say that uh, it's not the case, uh, two thirds, more, roughly two thirds of people say that this is not the case. There is still 37% 30, of people who believe that Svetlana Tikhanovska and the Coordination Council are attempting to uh, get closer to Russia. We also asked a question about uh, people's opinion on whether Svetlana Tikhanovska or Coordination Council, whether pursuing close relations with Russia or the West. And there is a certain shift, uh, or there is a certain tendency, high tendency for people uh, among the protest majority to say that Svetlana Tikhanovska's HQ and the Coordination Council are uh, about the cooperation with the West rather than, rather than with Russia. Next, uh, the rating of trust uh, or distrust to various institutions. Uh, the most popular institute is non-governmental media, it's, uh, positive, uh, positive attitude, uh, followed by the Orthodox, uh, Orthodox and Catholic Church, the, and the independent, independent media is in the lead. Orthodox and Catholic Church are running up. Uh, although Belarus uh, is an Orthodox uh, nation, uh, two thirds are Orthodox, uh, but still they trust uh, both Orthodox and Catholic Church, roughly similar figures. This is followed by various uh, organizations uh, by the protest movement, the, the Viktor Babarika's campaign, uh, Svetlana Tikhanovska's campaign, Hate Headquarters Coordination Council, uh, roughly same figures with, with insignificant differences between, between them. The state organs, state bodies, uh, the army is trusted by, is, is the most trusted public body. The attitude towards the army is fairly positive. Other state media, uh, other, other state agencies uh, enjoy quite similar level of support. Only uh, the proponents of Dr. Lukashenko's regime, the so-called Lukashenko uh, stronghold, uh, they, they believe these entities. The president, constitutional court, national anti-crisis management, and so on and so forth. The, the, the NAC is, is, is not uh, the case here, it's not in the list. Uh, so the state-run media and the Central Election Committee are the worst uh, trusted, uh, the, the, the least trusted uh, public bodies. So this will create, or this, this is very likely to uh, create uh, political dif difficulties because the main electoral body, the Central Elect Ele Election Commission, cannot exist with such low approval ratings. Uh, Lukashenko's rating is 24%. Uh, 24% of people approve of, uh, of him. All Belarusian People's Assembly, uh, it's uh, APA. Uh, quite many people know about it. Uh, one third people know everything about it, and uh, another half, 48%, know about this. Uh, have heard something about this. Uh, most people don't know what this is about. Even so, for some people from the Lukashenko stronghold, they don't know what it is. Only one fourth of people can uh, state the objective of the Belarusians uh, of this APA. Most people do not believe this APA to be a, represent a representative body of all the Belarusians. They do not believe that this is an efficient way uh, to uh, engage in dialogue between the protest movement and, and the, the, the regime. Uh, the widespread opinion is that uh, the APA does not truly represent the interests of people like myself and that, like the respondents. Uh, the APA is a puppet organization created to further the interests of Lukashenko. And they, uh, most people uh, quite don't, do not understand uh, the purpose of this APA meeting. Uh, so uh, summing up, uh, APA is a body that uh, few people know well about. Uh, it's not trusted uh, even by the proponents of Lukashenko. Moving on. Uh, now, this, this one is a tougher question. We've asked uh, this question uh, about uh, how pe how officials should be, ele should be elected or appointed uh, in Belarus. Uh, appointments uh, by the head of the state, uh, collegial peer election, 
second option and the general election, like the presidents uh, as they're elected by rank and file eligible citizens. It's a tough question for the people. You should you should realize when interpreting these results that uh, the Belarusians have never have never paused to think as to how uh, provincial leaders, oblast leaders, uh, people heading up local law enforcement should be elected. So this is a toughie indeed. This is a tough question. And uh, probably uh, this question exceeds the level of competency or the level of thinking of uh, most people responding to this question. This is a brand new question thrown at them, roughly speaking. But uh, what we have been able to pick up, uh, all people uh, apart from the Lukashenko's uh, stronghold, uh, they are for the indirect, uh, the, they are for the peer <coughs> elections uh, for the uh, lower levels of government. Uh, the general elections uh, is the best way for the low, for the local governments, not not the peer elections. Mm, only uh, the Lukashenko stronghold believe that uh, the head of state should be calling the shots and appointing the key uh, key officials. Uh, the third question again about the uh, the third wave of the question about the flags. Uh, Thirty-three percent uh, are for the white red white flag. Uh, 41 percent for the red and green flag, the official flag, and uh, quite a bunch of people, one-fourth of people, say that none of the above is, the, is their flag. They don't feel closest uh, to, to either. This is an important indicator of the moods of the people. I should also say that the Belarusian society only holds limited groups of people. There are only limited groups of people uh, who do not accept uh, one or the, or the other flag. There is a group of Lukashenko's stronghold, one fourth, or one fifth of those in percentage uh, who who feel quite strongly about the flag. They're very radically against uh, the white, red, white flag. And uh, among the core of the protests, uh, the, the, the protesters, uh, there is a certain group which is not radical, but they're quite uh, persistently against uh, the red and green, the official flag, and they're, they're quite uh, in favor of the white, red, white flag, obviously. So by and large, the flag is uh, going to be determined by whoever is in power uh, and initiates the process uh, of uh, uh, getting the, uh, flag, the flag approved. If most, if if the if the protesters uh, take over, then most people will support the white red white flag. Although only one third of Belarusian urban dwellers say that white red white flag is is the one. Moving on, uh, when this question was prepared, uh, it was uh, more more interesting to us. Uh, we prepared this questionnaire uh, in early January. Now we're. Uh, mid-February is looming. So when we asked uh, people uh, back then, it was an interesting phenomenon. Uh, many people shared on Instagram, on social media, with uh, pictures, uh, photos of, of whose uh, New Year's address they were watching, by Tikhanovsky or by Lukashenko. When we asked them in early January, 21% 20, uh, uh, said that they were watching the live address of Svetlana Tikhanovsky and uh, 40 Eight percent were watching. Uh, Thirty-one percent were watching uh, Alexander Lukashenko's address. Uh, we should note that uh, quite many people from the core of the protests uh, were watching uh, Lukashenko's address uh, because they believed some important statement was going to be man made. They believed it to be important. But this is this is the percentage split uh, anyway. Forty-seven percent of people did not watch anything uh, either. Did not watch either uh, live address. We then asked the, uh, the question about the recording of the New Year's address. In this case, uh, Svetlana Tikhanovskaya's address uh, uh, was viewed by more people than the, the address by Alexander Lukashenko, 20% uh, against, against 16. So we're following, uh, we're drawing closer to the, to the end of the slides. Uh, death penalty question, uh, the Uh, the the answers we got to this question uh, is very positive uh, is, uh, uh, 
quite positive for people who are uh, who, who, who wish to abolish the death penalty. Uh, disapprove entirely, and most disapprove. Uh, Forty-three percent, forty-three percent of people uh, share these opinions. Forty-three percent of people either disapprove entirely or mostly disapprove death penalty. Uh, quite a number of people, ten point four percent of people, are unsure or chose not to say. Uh, that's, uh, th this, this is the situation when we have fewer than fifty percent of urban residents. Uh, supporting death penalty, which is uh, quite in line with the average European result. I believe this is largely related uh, to, to the matter, uh, to, to this uh, decrease of trust to state bodies. Uh, the, uh, the Belarusians are not uh, prepared to, to give the monopoly uh, to violence uh, to, the, uh, to the government they do, do not trust. Uh, the relations about among people. Uh, most people are trustworthy. Do you believe that most people are trustworthy, or that people should be very cautious before trusting others? Uh, people uh, who say that most people are trustworthy. It's thirty percent of people. These are the most politically engaged people. Either the core of the protests or Lukashenko's stronghold. Uh, they see the horizontal ties in the in the in the, in the society, and they the thirty percent of them believe that people are trustworthy. So this would be it for my slides. Uh, thank you very much for your attention. Uh, you have my email right there at the bottom of the slide. As mentioned today, uh, Anton will dis disseminate the slides. He will uh, mail you the slides in Russian and in English. We will also attach the SAV file openable by the SPSS uh, software. It's uh, it's in Russian. Also, the Chatham House today will feature uh, the article uh, with an attachment of the SEF file and the article in English. Uh, that would be it uh, for my part. Uh, I'll be welcome. Uh, I will welcome any questions uh, on your side. Thank you, Rigor. Uh, yes, uh, just a reminder, you can type your questions into the chat box, or if you wish, uh, if you feel like answering it personally, you can ask to be given the floor in the chat box. You, you will be able to voice your question personally. Some questions have been followed uh, on before the beginning of our presentation. I will now uh, read them out. A question from Nikolai Petrushenko. Given that a uh, considerable part of political organizations and uh, political parties did not get an invite uh, to participate in the all Belarusian political uh, so uh, people's association, and the others were completely blessed uh, by the number of uh, seats. Uh, well, the, there's a question about uh, the, the trust uh, to the Be Belarusian Republican Council of Youth, uh, BRSM, the pocket organization of Lukashenko, and uh, uh, the Belarus, uh, another pocket organization by, of Lukashenko. Uh, so we should not be expecting something unusual there compared to other uh, representatives of the, of the public bodies. I believe that to a certain extent, we can match these results with uh, the trade unions, whether people trust or not, choose not to trust uh, the trade unions. We have official or yellow trade unions here. In this case, uh, only 20% of uh, urban dwellers uh, trust them. I don't think that um, the trust uh, to BRSM, the Belarusian Republican Youth Council, uh, or the trust of the Belarus organization will differ from the trust or the lack thereof rather uh, to, to the yellow uh, to, to the yellow uh, trade unions. Another question is about the methodology. Which uh, lessons have you drawn from the method that you've used, from the Kavi Kavi method, from this online poll that you've used? Other organizations like uh, OSW in Poland uh, did a phone call interview. Could you please talk about the downsides and the upsides of each of these 
methods by telephone or Kawi. So why did you end up choosing the Kawi method, the online method? I believe that web interview in my case uh, is uh, better because you can ask more questions. I mean, people who do these polls, uh, they are financially motivated because they receive uh, some money for the uh, from the online panel to pass these interviews. You can ask more questions. Uh, people feel uh, uh, more safe uh, when uh, doing this online uh, as opposed to a telephone conversation. So I believe that in this case, uh, well, it's, it's quite interesting. The downside is it's impossible to represent uh, the rural settlements, uh, rural population. On the phone, it is possible. Well, they can, a more representative sample of the entire Belarusian population is possible. Uh, in case of online, this is impossible. If we do the Kawi in the rural areas, we will find very unusual, untypical representatives of the rural population. So more advanced uh, rural residents that are essentially living in some cottage houses and they're not exactly representative uh, of uh, the rural population, the, the classical notion of the word. And also there is a problem uh, of 55, 55 plus people, the senior people who whether they actually represent their social stratum, whether they, as uh, internet users uh, doing the Kawi method, uh, are more progressive than other representatives of that group. If I had the money, I would have done everything. I would have done both. Uh, the online, uh, the web inter interview, and the telephone questionnaire, the telephone poll, plus focus groups, I would have done everything given the funds. But uh, there are limitations to every method. This, this, is the, this is the thing you should understand. Even if we see that we had this example with the United States, like for, from four, four years from four years ago when Donald Trump won, then even in such countries as the U.S., uh, well, social science can do everything. So that there are limitations there. There are there are limitations with social sciences, uh, so social studies, uh, telephone question, telephone polls. Uh, well, quite many people are unprepared. So you imagine a situation, you're walking in town and you get a call from Paul from a Polish phone number. What do you think about Alexander Lukashenko? Well, it's, it's a situation that I'd be uncomfortable in, uh, in their shoes. Uh, what do you answer? Do you, do you choose not to answer? So not all people are prepared to do that. Well, it's possible to give uh, phone calls to more people, to expand the coverage, uh, to think about the scenarios on how to engage in a conversation with a person with a specific person on the other uh, on the other side uh, but there are limitations I, I mean you don't uh, there are only so many questions that you can ask over the phone right uh, there's a question from the chat box uh, like a follow-up to this one the survey was conducted uh, among urban residents if we talk about the entire population of belarus how much is it worth adjusting the the, the outcomes and to, to which side thank you uh, that's an interesting question that's an interesting question. Uh, we've uh, picked up the outcomes of other uh, surveys uh, as to the opinions of the uh, rural residents. Their thinking is largely the same as the for people, uh, people in smaller towns, the urban uh, dwellers in smaller towns. Uh, the smaller towns are a bit warmer. Uh, well, there, there is more uh, people who don't care. Uh, and uh, uh, are skeptical about the protests uh, than, than the country's average in these smaller towns. Uh, some, a bit more people uh, feel better about Lukashenko, but uh, I don't, I, I, we cannot say that this is a brand new uh, picture there. This is a completely different picture there. When we asked about uh, what people think in the uh, rural settlements, uh, in the rural area, well, the unemployment is the key problem. Many people uh, are talking about this. Uh, largely, the, 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 the people who are most well off are, are retired, are senior citizens, uh, people who are on their pensions, pensioners. 
I don't really think that people uh, in uh, other other uh, other from this. Other than this, I don't think there are many differences uh, between the rural population and the population of Belarus in general. Uh, what we cannot say is that we cannot represent the rural areas in in our Kawi survey. It's impossible for objective reasons. It's very difficult to pull this off uh, online. It's very difficult to, to represent them. Even if we try and do that, try and do that, we again we see, we see this issue. We will see untypical representatives of, of people in social strata if they are rural uh, residents and they use internet. Thank you. The next question from Mike Dmitriev. Uh, the, the figures are very interesting, uh, but uh, actually the interpretation or motivation is more interesting. Why would people choose uh, to watch uh, Lukashenko's address in, in, instead of uh, Svetlana Tikhanovskaya's address? Thank you, Rehor. Uh, yeah, the motivation interpretation is indeed important. Uh, as, uh, like I said, part of the people watched uh, Lukashenko's address because it's, it's customary that they, they have, they've had this tradition of watching his address and Lukashenko is still the acting president of Belarus. A, a part of people were looking forward to some statement, to, to some uh, something uh, he would say. I believe that uh, these are the main points why people uh, were interested in watching the uh, Lukashenko's address. Svetlana Tikhanovskaya's address, it's a bit of a different format. And it was geared towards uh, the people who are the core of the protests, uh, the core of the protest. I don't think that it would have been an interesting thing to watch for the bulk, for the majority of Belarusians. It was political by message. Uh, it contained only political messages. I believe that in principle, we will do that in, in another survey. Uh, its, it's uh, results are not yet prepared to be uh, publicized. But we asked people about uh, the issues, about the problems that they face, that they feel they face. Now, we see that actually uh, the skeptics and uh, the people who don't care, they're talking uh, more about social economic problems. And these people are most important for them. Uh, it's, uh, these economic points, like the living standards dropping, are very important uh, for those indifferent people, for people who don't care. They, they, they care about the handling of the coronavirus pandemic. They care about the education and upbringing for their, for their family, for, the, for their children. Uh, they don't really care. They, they, uh, they are indifferent as to how the political situation in Belarus develops. Thank you. Another question from Volga Samashka. Uh, in August 2020, was a similar survey conducted? Can you outline the main features of the dynamics of the Belarusians' mood over these uh, six months? Uh, the first wave was done in uh, September. I believe that in principle, other surveys have been conducted in Belarus as well. But unfortunately, uh, most of them were, have not been published. They were some of them were surfacing in Telegram channels, those polls. But I can imagine more or less uh, what was uh, being written about in August, what people wrote about in August. Uh, but uh, right now, the social economic agenda is back on the table. It came back. It was downplayed in summer and in autumn. People were talking about the political problem, the, the bulk of the people anyway. Now this, the economy is back, is back on track, is back on the table. Talking about the mood, uh, the dynamics, uh, well, people are growing more, well, talking directly. They, they are a bit less confident of the, of the victory of the protest. Uh, with every uh, next survey uh, we we make, uh, Belarusians are less confident that the victory will come. The rating of potential candidates, uh, the potential leaders of protests, uh, 
nothing that she is changing there. So the potential president among the protest leaders. Viktor Babarika is indeed a person who, um, well, who's actually a dream person for Belarusians. The way he emerged, uh, he scored very good ratings uh, quite quickly. So that, that's the leader that Belarusians dream about. If we were uh, to see him running for office, uh, he would have scored quite a lot of, quite, quite a decent percentage, probably 60% in the, in the first round of voting. So I believe that uh, in this case, the moods are not really changing in this, uh, from this uh, perspective. Oh, I, I would have expanded more uh, over the six months uh, over what's been happening. But uh, well, if, if I do that uh, for all the questions, this will take too much time. We don't have that time now. OK, I will remind you of uh, Rigor's email address. He showed it uh, in the in his final slide. So uh, he'll be able to give you more detailed responses. Next question by, by Olga Pauk. Uh, so what is the, the attitude of the local governments, of the local bodies of branches of government? Well, we, I cannot say anything about that. Uh, we haven't gauged uh, uh, the opinion of the, uh, of the officials in the smaller towns. Uh, but let's talk about the residents of the smaller towns. We, we did cover those. Uh, the economic agenda bothers them the most. Uh, they mostly believe that the protest activity is winding down. And uh, uh, the, the, the bigger, biggest events related to protests was, were happening in August. Uh, nothing was happening ever since. So uh, when they're uh, reading the accounts from Minsk, uh, they, well, they feel like it's coming from an entirely different country. So again, the economic agenda is very important to them, the salaries, unemployment, the COVID handling. We see that these are the main points uh, that they care very much about that. In a way, they're quite skeptical. They are indifferent, so people who don't care, the way we dub them in, in the survey, they're a bit less interested about the politics. They're a bit, they're a bit about well, they're less inclined to meddle with politics. They're less inclined to get interested with politics. And they wish to limit uh, their interaction with the politics uh, as far as possible. Right. What are the moods of the Belarusians uh, with relation to the European Union currently? Yeah, we've asked, this, we, we've asked these questions uh, in wave one and wave three of the in wave five, uh, when uh, wave one and wave two of this survey, we have not asked it in the third wave, in the current wave. Uh, so uh, I can also show you uh, the uh, previous uh, slides. Uh, we could uh, send them to use attachments to this, to this one. Not, not really. The majority of Belarusians are eager to enter the EU. Uh, well, only 10% of Belarusians uh, wish to join the EU. Uh, so, well, it's, it's not about the disruption of the ties uh, of Belarusians, uh, of, of Belarus, uh, but uh, Belarus will, will have to leave the Eurasian Economic Union and they will, uh, Belarus will uh, get farther from Russia. So there are quite few Belarusians there, about 10%. Uh, the image of neutrality, the image of the bridge uh, between the European Union and Russia. This, this is the, uh, the the fact that Belarus will be able to build relations with with both, uh, either in alliance with both or outside of any alliance, any bloc. Uh, the question about the trust to independent media. It's interesting whether the Belarusians uh, believe Telegram channels to be independent media. Uh, independent media and Telegram channels, do they enjoy the same extent of trust? It would be interesting, interesting to know. Yeah, I cannot answer this one from the get-go. Uh, I can say with a certain extent of assurance, I will send you the, the, the file, the SAV file with all the respondents of the, of the respondents. 
all, all the responses. Uh, if, if you know how to handle SPSS software, you'll be able to do that. Uh, but uh, uh, we should really uh, think harder about how many Belarusians are using Telegram. It's, it's not the most uh, popular messenger in Belarus. There, there's Viber, there are other messengers. So not all Belarusians are using, the, uh, te using Telegram. People on Telegram are mostly uh, the ones representing the core of the protests, although Telegram is uh, obviously used by other strata of the Belarusian population. So we uh, we avoided asking this question about the trust uh, to Telegram channels, but uh, that's an interesting one. Well, next time I will, I will even put this down. We will we will ask it next time as a separate as a separate um, let's say uh, s uh, statement to agree or disagree with. Well, I, I will not answer this question right now. Let's let's do this in two months. Uh, it, it will be more appropriate to do it to to do it then uh, rather than guess guessing game now. Okay, right. Uh, sorry if I missed this. Uh, There's another question. Sorry if I missed this. But uh, did you ask any questions about uh, the Belarusians' vision of the future political system? Presidential, parliamentary, republic, or uh, indifferent? In principle, we've asked uh, similar questions about that. So what have we seen? Definitely two presidential terms is the limit. This is the only way Belarusians see it. And largely, largely, people understand uh, the political system through the negation of uh, Lukashenko. It's it's a tough question for Belarusians. Well, think about a common person and put them in the, in in your in their shoes. Uh, parliamentary republic, the, the, the development of the parties, political parties. It's a very interesting uh, question for the, for them. Well, even if they thought about it, they said this, this have never, they have never seen it. They have a very hard time imagining of how a presidential or parliamentary republic would look like. They only know the presidential. But uh, the limitation of curtailing the presidential powers, uh, the uh, limitation of the number of terms, presidential terms, the election of the court's representatives, of the heads of provinces, of districts, you know, people want to elect this generally rather than have somebody elected for uh, elect them for them. So it's the negation of the current political system. The Be Belarusians don't want uh, what's what's there right now. Uh, the Belarusians uh, want a conventional presidential parliamentary republic. Okay, and the final question. Uh, maybe the this question is uh, not really to you, uh, but your assessment of the large scale polls, quote unquote, uh, announced by Lukashenko, some details of which became known yesterday, 10,000 respondents, the questionnaire was filled uh, in 15 to 20 minutes. How realistic was it to conduct such a survey and process its, its outcomes in a relatively short time frame? Uh, should 10,000 people actually be interviewed to learn about uh, deeper moods? Yeah, uh, thank you very much for this question. 10,000 uh, people, it, it doesn't take 10,000. It's, it's definitely a PR stunt. It's a PR stunt uh, that, the, the, to show that we've, we've really asked uh, many people. It, it, you don't have to ask 10,000 people in the current uh, situation. If you want to run a unique survey, uh, you use uh, different methods. You use the telephone uh, survey, you use online survey, focus group, uh, in-depth interviews, and so on and so forth. Uh, 10,000 people, uh, a survey that, that huge is, is, is senseless. Uh, well, doing it, doing it fast enough, it depends on the resources you leverage. Uh, if, if you want it done fast, uh, it's possible. But by and large, Let's see the outcomes. Let's check out those results and let's see whether they are realistic or not. Right now, we see some information surfacing about uh, the content of those uh, of that survey. Well, th th there's not too much trust uh, about this poll, about this survey. And uh, you should also realize that uh, social science uh, social studies and, and surveys by state uh, bodies is very limited. Even their uh, understanding of the things happening in the Belarusian society is very limited. They've shown it time and time again before, 
in the political domain, in uh, the COVID domain, uh, COVID handling particularly. Many decisions made, many things uh, voiced. They are definitely, uh, they were definitely not politically important uh, for, for the government. If they had sociological data, they would have acted completely differently. But uh, the government acted the way they did. So it, uh, this is to say that uh, they were not uh, relying on uh, uh, surveys at all. Okay, so it's been an hour. Thank you very much, Rehor. It's been very interesting and uh, inf informative.